Well, welcome everyone to another edition of the John Norman Leadership Podcast. Thanks for joining us today. And I encourage you, if you like the content, to share it, like it, subscribe to it. And uh, I hope uh, it'll help you. And as you lift the level of your leadership, others will rise around you. I am honored and privileged to be joined today, um, not just by a great speaker, or uh, orator, but also a great friend, uh, Pastor Dave Niblock from Life Church in Leeds. He's also the Leeds United Chaplain, Premier League Leeds at last. It's about 56 years it took him to get back, but they're there. Got four kids, married to an amazing girl, abs, four kids, no television. Um, but he really is a great friend. He's a great leader, one of the, the UK's finest leaders. So welcome to the show, Dave. Thanks, John. Leeds aren't falling apart anymore, are they? No, not anymore. How's life in Leeds? Sunny. No lockdowns here. Uh, we've been in um, tier seven, which basically just means total freedom. So it's, it's been pretty good. <laughs> That's well, obviously Leeds. not true. That's obviously not true. Things are going well um, in Leeds. Great city. City's developing and looking forward to kind of getting back to some form of better normality. But things are good. So we're recording this in February 2021. So if you're listening to this later on, we are right in the middle of a lockdown right now. We just had some good news. They're letting us out a little bit next month. And the next month, the next back end in June, we've got a big party happening. OK, so watch this space. So, Dave, I thought we'd just talk today, have a conversation around integrity. And, you know, that's quite a hot topic right now, especially in the Christian world. Lots of challenges around this subject. And you, you are a man that I look up to, a friend of integrity. So I thought we'd unpack it a little bit more, uh, have a conversation. I know a lot of people are asking around the subject um, what, what it is. What is a, a leader? What is the main ingredient of a leader? And how do I become a leader worth following? So maybe you can un, un, unravel that a little for us. Yeah, I mean, good questions. I think the, you know, leadership is one thing, followership is another thing. You know, it's many people want to be leaders, which is great, but you've got to have the followers to be a leader. You know, otherwise, if you're trying to lead something without any, uh, any followers, you, you, you're on your own and it's hard to build anything substantial on your own. Um, yeah. I, I, think the, I think the greatest currency of leadership um, is, is found in relationship. And, you know, we can lead out of or a place of position or we can lead out of a place of command or given authority like you would in maybe the armed services. And all of that is is good, still good leadership. But I, th- I think there's a richer, truer level of leadership, which is found in a, uh, a relationship, um, which is based primarily on trust. Right. I think I think relationships that are based on trust thrive when trust begins to break down, the relationship begins to break down. And if there is a breakdown of trust in a relationship, uh, there is definitely going to be a breakdown between that leader and the follower because trust is lacking. And so in my leadership journey, and, um, you know, I'm kind of spoke midterm into it now, if you look at the context of my life, got a lot, lot to learn. Um, I think some of the greatest wins I've had in my journey is when we have built a strong team and like you're saying i've become a leader worth following hopefully that's the case because of um because of integrity and because of the currency of trust um i don't think i've always had the right best skills i might not have always been the most inspirational I might not have always been the most creative or entrepreneurial but i'm hope i'm i hope i'm a leader that people who work with me can trust and if i say yes i mean yes yeah. And if I say I'll be there, I'll be there. And if I say I'll do it, I'll do it. And as a result of that, you build up this trust, which thrives and which builds up a relationship. And so, you know, I, I think about companies who have lost my trust. They are companies that lose my business because I don't necessarily want to invest or engage with a business that I don't trust. If You know, if I feel like I've been robbed in a deal or something hasn't been as it seems. And so when it comes to our leadership, I want to be a leader worth following when people know I can trust Dave Niblock that if I'm walking with him, working with him, um, I'm in a safe place. I think that's that's kind of how I've tried to go about it. I think one of the challenges, I love what you're saying about trust, but one of the challenges is you can actually accomplish a lot without integrity. So there's a generation who's coming through and they are seeing a lot of, you know, leaders, um, you know, leaders of prominence 
who have accomplished a lot without it and then it all crumbles down. But what would you say um, about that? I, personally, I feel integrity should be an essential ingredient that we have to lead with, even though it's the slow route to influence. Yeah, I mean, leaders who lack integrity lack credibility and you know, credibility leads to influence. You, and it, you know, leadership really is influence. And so if you track it back, it's credibility and it's integrity. But, you know, it takes, it takes a long time to build integrity, but it can be lost, can be lost in a moment. Um, I, I, and I definitely think there's a bit of a turning of the tide where people probably put up with a lot more than they do now in terms of previous generations would have maybe submitted better to higher levels of authority based on who they were. Um, and based on their position. I think we're now working with a younger generation who have a different mindset and a different mentality, which is more, I don't really care who you are. I care more about what you say and what you do and you know the level of integrity with that. We see that in politics, we see that in business and we see that in sport. And so there are obviously, like I was saying, certain roles. You know, if you're in the army, I don't really care if the general... <laughs> You know, I don't really care what he's doing behind the scenes. I want him to keep me safe on the battlefield. Sure. And I want to make sure that we win the battle. But then when it comes to other areas of, of, of leadership, you know, I want to know that this person, I want to know that there is a, especially in, in the world that I'm in, which is a, um, you know, a spiritual led organization, ultimately, hopefully we reflect the heart of God in terms of where I'm leading. And I want our hearts to reflect the heart of God. And I believe the heart of God is honest. And I believe the heart of God is pure. And is integrous. That is the character of who he is in my belief. And so therefore, I want to lead and create a culture which reflects that heart and that ethos. Yeah, that's a that's a great that's a great way to understand it. Do you think that people often confuse talent and integrity? Often we get so caught up in the talent, in you know, the personality, all those things which are important in leadership, you know. I love charismatic leadership. I, I feel like quite charismatic myself. I know you are. But do you so find sometimes we, we will turn a blind eye to someone's inter integrity in leadership, in business, in church, because they are so gifted? 100%. I mean, we all love, you know, a gifted person. We celebrate, we celebrate the gift in people. And I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, I, we both love football. You know, some of my favourite players – you know, around the year, you know, I think of Luis Suarez, I think of different players who I've celebrated and cheered because, you know, of their ability on a pitch. Yeah. Was I too bothered what they were doing in their private life? Not really, because they were doing something which was pleasing me on the pitch. Um, and so it's easy to celebrate that gift. I think, though, when it comes to... Um, a place of leadership and when it comes to a place of team building I think there is a different standard required because um, if you can if you can match talent and leadership and character and integrity I think that's when you're on to a winner but you know you, you you probably heard the phrase you know your gift will often take you where your character can't keep you and that's sometimes a dangerous place to be for the person and for the people following the person because things can crumble down you know, I love, I, I, obviously I read the Bible and I love what it says, David, who was, you know, a great king, the Bible says, um, led the nation of Israel with skillful hands. That was his talent, but it also had integrity of heart. It wasn't one without the other, it was both. And I don't just want to be a leader of integrity with no skill, but neither do I want to be a skillful leader with no integrity. I think sure. the, aim is, the aim is to build skill and leadership and invest into both. Sometimes we think, well, I need to invest into my integrity. Yeah, but you also need to invest into your skill and, and you know, raise them both up. Yeah. How do you, personal question, how do you personally maintain your integrity? You're a leader, you're in the spot, you're in the public spotlight, you're married. Um, we live in a day where social media, as we all know, is analysing our every move. Is there certain things that you do say, don't do, do say? Is there certain things that you do, principles that you live by to really guard that area of your life, Dave? Well, I'm public now, aren't I? So, I, I, you know, it's easy to, you know, this is a public Zoom. and It's easy to show integrity in public. Wow. Yeah, that's the easiest thing in the world. The hardest thing is to maintain your integrity in private. So and good, man. 
ultimately there comes a point where your private life does leak into your public life. And we see it time and time and time again. Um, it, personal integrity, I would say, is so much more valuable than public integrity. Public integrity is important, and that, that determines what we tweet, Instagram. You know, there's sometimes yeah. I've written something, I'm gone, I can't post that. And the reason I can't post that is because I don't think it's integrous. I don't think it's right character for me to post that. But privately, I'll probably be communicating that with my wife and friends. And so I suppose I sometimes come to a point where I go, I don't just want to maintain public, maintain public integrity. I want to maintain private integrity. Because I think life, I think life presents you with the opportunity to live two lives. Or you could call it two for the price of one. And, and you know, my, my, I suppose my, my basic example is when I was at school, there was almost like a school day niblock. And then there was an outside of school day niblock in my home and in my local church and amongst my, some of my friends where I would laugh at certain things and say certain things in certain environments, but not other environments, because I was almost like two different people. There comes a point where that will catch up with you, almost like powder trails in a cartoon. And you don't realize, but you're leaking powder. And then the ignition comes and pff, blows you up. But I think, I think maintaining integrity is hardest under pressure. Yeah. When, when the pressure hits, that is when it's hard to maintain integrity. When, when my, my, when my marriage is going well, when what I'm leading is going well, when things are going fine, like my integrity is fine. It's when pressure comes. It's when the test comes. Do I compromise? Um, and, you know, one of the truest tests of integrity is to, is to bluntly refuse to be compromised. And I think that's, that's where you need accountability. That's where you need strong friends. It's where you need your relationships to be real, starting from with your wife and your kids and your friends. And then there needs to be good systems in place to avoid, you know, financial mismanagement or relational mismanagement or anything like that, which could just take you off course because you don't necessarily, it doesn't basically explode overnight. Normally it's a series of tiny surrenders to self-interest. Very good over a period of time. I don't think you wake up one morning a bad person. I no. think what it is, it happens every, it's almost like a dripping tap and you wake up the next, you wake up, if you keep a dripping tap dripping over days, it will come to a point where it's flooding over. But initially it doesn't seem that big a deal. But if you don't stop the dripping tap, eventually it will cause a flood. And you need people to spot that in you if you can't spot it yourself and just have real great, like I'm saying, honest friends and accountability and no matter, and if you get higher in your leadership and more responsibility, there needs to be more systems in place because the collateral can be obviously more dangerous. Excellent, Dave. Just before we finish, um, I think we could all lift the, the level of our integrity. You know, my strap line, the John Long Leadership Podcast, is lift the level of your leadership. I think, you know, we all want to read the, the next book or we all want to listen to a podcast that's going to just explode us into the next level. But I think, like you said, it's that drip and tap where you go, okay, I'm going to rest that, I'm going to rest this. And so for all of us, for all of us, everyone listening, everyone watching today, I think we can all just lift the, lift the level of our leadership, lift the level of our integrity. Um, what would you say to someone, whether they're a CEO of a company, whether they are a church leader, a pastor, a business leader, what would you say is the first step just to really take in that, that next level in, 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 in to raise their integrity? I'll say be honest with yourself. You know, we've talked about being honest with others, but I think you have to be honest with yourself. And until you can get honest with yourself, you're always deceiving yourself. And deception is obviously one of the first aspects of a lack of integrity because you're not deceiving others. You're firstly deceiving yourself. And so you're going, oh, it's okay. It'll be fine. And it's those little areas of deception. And I think how you become honest with yourself is by becoming healthy as an individual. And sure. so I know we're busy, but we've got to set time aside to grow not just our skill, but who we are. If that means counseling, if that means therapy, if that means talking with someone, if that means going on a retreat, if that means getting help in your marriage, if that means becoming physically more active, mentally mentally healthier and your emotional well-being i also I just think it's the it's the complete person which i think maybe generations ago we sometimes maybe i mean i can't speak for the generations before but 
maybe disregarded some of the inner self for the outer self. I think now there's been a shift. And I even think businesses in the corporate world understand this. I'm going to get the best out of my employees when they are healthy on the inside. And yet the Bible's all about that. The Bible's all about being healthy on the inside before anything happens on the outside. It's almost like the business world and sport. You know, you hear football clubs now investing huge amounts of money on the well-being of players and on the inside, on the health of them. And as chaplains, we know, you know, players go through challenges and the clubs are benefit are ha- are grateful for people who speak into the person because ultimately who you are on the inside will determine what comes out on the outside. And I think that's really important. And so be honest with yourself, get help where you can. And um, be vulnerable and be transparent about some of those things. We all struggle. We all have difficulties. We all stuff up. We all make mistakes. We all have temptations. We all have pressures. So there's no point thinking we are void of any of them. We've got to be open and realistic and go, they are real pressures into my world right now. And I am as susceptible as anybody else. So I'm not going to wag a finger at him or her because look at what they've done. Or look, I'm, I, could, I could easily succumb to that if I don't take care of the soul, you know, of who I am. Pastor Dave Niblock, absolutely brilliant. Practical wisdom on living a life of integrity and raising the level of your leadership. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks to everyone who has tuned in. Hey, if this has helped you, given you some tools to move your leadership forward, please like it, share it, uh, you know, send it to someone who might need it. Appreciate it. And see you next time on the John Norman Leadership Podcast. God bless. I'd value your commitment by liking it, sharing it, subscribing to it, commenting on it, and sharing it with your teams. Remember, you are your only limit, and this podcast is to lift the level of your leadership, and as you rise, others will rise around you.